how can you have Johnny Depp level hero story implemented in your business? Find out on today's episode of the Knowledge Boner Experience. What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Knowledge Boner Experience. Uh, we had a nice, juicy topic today. Um, it's no secret about what's going on with the uh, Johnny Depp Amber Heard case trial. Um, seems like everyone's talking about it. But what's so fascinating is, is as I'm as I'm watching this, my, my girlfriend laughs at me because she's like, I've never known you as like such a gossiper. I've, I've been keeping up. I'm definitely a huge uh, Johnny Depp fan. But what's interesting is even though the trial's happening, there's a lot of branding awareness going on behind the scenes, like a lot of branding awareness. And it's really cool because in marketing, when it comes to entrepreneurship, uh, especially you, you, you two here, my co-hosts, you know, Fung and Wally are here as usual. And from them being marketers, they know kind of the us versus them theory of marketing when it comes to business and branding, right? When anyone talks about branding, we all know you have to have a common enemy. And what better common enemy in the Amber Heard, Johnny Depp case than each other, right? And it's a trial. You're gonna you're gonna pick sides. And um, recently, Amber Heard had to fire her PR team that she's had, which is like apparently a really big uh, consulting PR firm in the industry. She let them go because she wasn't happy with the articles and and the the behind the scenes stuff going on that's making her out to be the bad guy. So she's pissed. Um, she fired them, let them go, got swooped up by someone else. But meanwhile. Everybody is kind of leaning more team Johnny. So regardless of what happens in this trial, I think what's so fascinating is even though the jury's not supposed to have a bias behind the scenes, we can all agree that that branding plays a very powerful role in the decision of what's going to happen in this trial. Right. When you guys agree on that in terms of branding. hundred percent, hundred percent. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's all going to play in. I mean, the publicity, the news side, like the jury is part of the, you know, the juries are human. You know what I mean? So they see all everything too. And even though they're going to, they're trying to be unbiased that, you know, it, it always sways in some way or another, you know, juries are, they're still humans making decisions one way or the other. Yeah. And, and so even during the trial with, with all the publicity going and kind of this anti Amber Heard, I mean, it's gotten to a point where literally entrepreneurs and successful businessmen like Patrick Bet David is even sharing articles and talking about this and how there was just a, um, basically a uh what do you call it when you when you sign the signatures um contracts um, not contracts the um uh when you want something uh, petition sign oh, the petition. Oh, yeah, yeah. petitions oh, i got you yeah they're at like they're at like 2.6 million signatures now to have amber heard not on aquaman 2 like that's how much the branding reputation of this trial is now affecting right so for everyone that has no idea what the hell i'm talking about Right now, um, Johnny Depp is, and Amber Heard are kind of like countersuing each other for defamation, right? Because Amber Heard forever ago tried to ruin his reputation, made sexual assault claims. Um, it might have been just physical assault. I don't, I don't know if necessarily sexual assault. Don't quote me on that. But um, and so he lost his role in the new Pirates franchise, which he, he he's fucking the creator of it. There's no without Jack Sparrow. There is no Pirates, right? Lost the Sparrow role uh, that's supposed to come out on Disney, just 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 solely about Jack Sparrow. And so naturally he's pissed, right? He's like, hey, you ruined my reputation. You're making claims that, that never happened. So now he's trying to counter sue her. And everything that's coming up in the trial is showing that she's actually the one who's been abusive, film, you know, filming him behind his back when he's not supposed to, trying to get a rise out of this poor individual who is battling with like drug addiction and, and all this stuff. And is just really looking bad for Amber, right? So the headlines of everything is not helping this case, right? People are are capitalizing off of it, getting clicks, and um, and so when I'm seeing this, I'm just like, wow, the the branding here is is very very powerful. And so what I wanted to do was is I wanted to pick y'all's two brain on this today because. Uh, you know, you see a lot of this too with even Jason Capital Wally, right? You know, I, I know some of his most polarizing content, you know, was uh, stuff when he talks about like things like smoking weed, right? Get, gets a lot of attention from that branding, but his common enemy in his branding is nine to five jobs, right? So he basically took to taking nine to five jobs, made them the enemy. Um, and I want, before we go into it, I want to show everyone an example of how powerful this is in terms of a branding. Okay. So I'm going to play this video. That's going around so you guys can see the level uh, that this has gotten to in terms of Johnny Depp's favor 
And uh, so this is what happened with Starbucks recently, right? Starbucks got under a lot of heat. I don't know who did it, if it was like a, an employee that went around and, and did this, but they put up a tip jar so everyone can see what's going on. So, so I'm gonna play this video. <laughs> I can't fucking read. Okay, ready? Go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Go, Johnny. Fuck <laughs> number. <laughs> so <laughs> what's crazy? It's gotten so much to the point where everyone's become kind of like anti-herd that um, that there's a tip, there's tip jars going out where everyone's team Johnny, right? So in terms of branding for Johnny Depp, which I, it, which, which the genius behind this is, I don't even know if this was intentional and on purpose. I generally have no idea, right? But when you get to the point where people are like team Amber Heard and team Johnny, and that's that level of polarization, and people are like justice for Johnny, justice for Johnny, really made her out to be the bad guy, right? Which is going into his favor. Right. Um, how how do you number one, how do you come up with a decision of who to kind of throw rocks at? Because that's what everyone talks about. Right. So in y'all's opinion, you know, and, and how important is this to have the common enemy? Right. Because everyone talks about it, but we're, we're kind of seeing the effects that's having on even a trial case, much less someone's business. So how important do you guys think it is to to have that level of polarization? And then number two, how the hell do you decide who your common enemy is going to be? Hmm, that's a great question. Uh, so I, I, yeah, I'll, I'll take a swing at this. And basically, so so <clears throat> to to give context for in terms of us versus them, I mean, I think the first level of that is just that it, it creates a bubble, right? Like it, you know, in the in the dating niche, I mean, of course, I, I don't know that much about the dating stuff in terms of teaching it, but uh, my my mentor Jason Capital, he was a big dating coach for a little while, and so I mean, one one thing that's like that's like whenever you you know you're you're having a us versus them situation, meaning you, like having a con, common enemy, it creates like a bubble, you know, between you and this other person, right? This level of rapport that now, that now, oh, you guys are now aligning against somebody else. It's almost like, instead of now sitting against, like across from each other, you're now sitting side by side, if that makes sense, right? And and, and that's super powerful for, for marketing, right? And in terms of just building rapport with people. Um, and to, to give context for for you know, Jason's specific business, uh, exactly what Dylan said earlier, right? It's it's you know we created us first, them versus you know, and it, and the us first them was actually more simple. It was more like fuck ordinary, right? That's literally that that was the the literal like us first them that we created. When, and, and then we created this idea of like what what's an ordinary life, right? Well, it's like the nine to five. You know, you go to school, get a job. You know go to college, right? Get, you know, get married and all this stuff and, you know, basically work under the man. And so that was the us versus them that we created, right? That's ordinary. And we're like, we don't want ordinary, you know, fuck ordinary. Right. And so that was like a lot of the, the branding and a lot of stuff that happened for at least the initial phases of team capital. Right. It's kind of funny. We even refer to ourselves like on the Jason team as team capital, right. You know, something that you said earlier, but it was kind of cool. Um, but, you know, what, what do you stand for whenever you stand you're in team capital, right? Fuck ordinary, right? We live a different lifestyle. We think differently. And it's like, you know, all of a sudden, like, you know, you, you're, you're creating this almost identity with the us first them as well, right? I like that. For everyone watching and listening to the podcast, you are all now team star, no matter what. I don't care what you say. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that, that's interesting. Um, uh, Fong, what are, what are your thoughts on it? I mean... I, I, honestly, I don't have really much to like back up on that. I agree with everything Wally says right there. You know, it's just like you, when you create that, when you create that identity with what you stand for, like it, it makes sense. I think in the case of like Johnny Depp right here, it's abuse, right? Mm -hmm. The What they're throwing rocks at is that abuse, whether it's male or female is not okay. Right. Mm -hmm. And then like, that's what's coming to light. And people just see like how like shitty of a person that person is, who's like trying to exploit somebody and things like that. Down to right? the story. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Because it's not just about it being equal. What people are leaning on is that it's not fair that people will take a, a female side in the case. Right. But men can be abused too. Right. But it's, they always have this narrative going the opposite. So now, and what's cool is even I'm, I'm reading like comments on this and stories like this has gotten so powerful in terms of story and taking a side that women who have previously been abused are even stepping up and saying men can be abused too. justice for Johnny. Right. They're not even sticking with their gender. Right. That's how yeah, powerful yeah. the story has come in. And, but how the how the hell for those listening to this, how can you actually create that? Right. Obviously, there's got to be a time factor. Like, let, let's let's call it what it is. John Depp, he's famous. Right. He already gets attention from all his stuff. Right. But for people that are listening and watching to this show that are like, OK, well, 
I'm not Johnny Depp. I don't have that, that level of attention, right? What, what, what kind of, what are some tactics that people can use and take away for some huge knowledge boner moments to, to, first of all, if we're to break up step, step one, you know, what can we do to figure out who the hell our common enemy is going to be? And then step two, where can we go with it to start building up the consistency of getting people to agree and hop on the wagon being team whatever and 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 going after you know yeah fuck the common enemy right screw those guys right so so first of all how 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 can they go what exercise would you guys do for your clients to help them figure out who that common enemy is first and then let's go into game plan take yep. a swing while hmm. totally got this one so so uh for you guys that uh that that love to read books uh, i'm sure a lot of you guys do uh please go check out the book blue ocean strategy uh, it's a great book. It's definitely something that, that you want to think about in terms of like marketing your business and everything like that. Um, but in the Blue Ocean Strategy, they, they talk about this idea of, of red water versus blue water, right? And so, so blue water, meaning, you know, there, there's nobody there, right? It's a, it's a beautiful ocean. There's nobody there. It's just peaceful, serene. You're just in there forever, right? And the other side is the, the red water, right? And, that, and so they consider that bloody water. And so, so what, what is bloody water? What does that mean? It's, it's where all the competition is happening. Right. It's like where people are fighting and, and, and different things like that. Um, and so what's really cool is that in the red water, right, whenever you're looking at like the competition of your business, what other people are saying and, and what are their like, what are they using in their marketing, especially if they start saying things that are very similar over time. You know, uh, everybody in the marketing industry eventually starts to copy the same people and you're, you're going to start seeing like the, mar the same marketing message, like similar across the board. It, it always happens in cycles like this. Right. Yeah. Um, and so, so you're saying you want to lead it, you want to lead the trend. And then oh, when other people start copying that messaging, you're because you kind of started the, the blue ocean, once it kind of gets bigger and bigger. No, no, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm showing how to identify what message to, to say, right? Okay. So in the red ocean, right, all these people have now ha have a similar marketing message, right? Oh, like all these gurus say you can make all this money on Instagram. All these gurus say that you can do this, right? You've seen all the ads before. That is now your common enemy, right? It's the it's what happens in the red water. Ah, so you identify the red ocean and make that the enemy. Exactly. You look yeah. right at the red ocean. You say that's the enemy. We do other stuff over here in the blue ocean. That's right, fire. Honestly. There you go. Huge. That right there should put you guys at half chub, like a hundred percent. That's a huge gold nugget. Okay, cool. So, um, for everyone's listening in, they, they're like, okay, this is, this is a space I want to get into. They, they understand an idea of what the red ocean is. They're like, cool. I have a common enemy, right? What, 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 how can we start consistently attacking that and getting the messaging out and branding awareness and, and really kind of building that tribe? Because let's call it what it is. Johnny Depp has built a tribe right? Whether it's intentional or not, this is the power. And everyone talks about it, which I thought was cool is because we know this, right? We hear this in the ClickFunnels community, you know, Brunson Brunson talks about this all the time. Everyone says that you got to build a tribe, you got to build a tribe. And we all know this, but it's not like the forefront. But as I'm watching this trial unfold and I'm seeing it, I'm like, holy shit. Like he legitimately has built a, a raving cult-like tribe where everyone's like team johnny screw ever her ruin her career no no shot she gets aquaman too like you know fighting for him behind the scenes bringing him flowers you know when he walks out and stuff and he's so grateful for it as well but like i mean like i mean how the hell do you where do you even begin yeah so i i, I kind of i can kind of jump in a little bit on this because where i think it really started for this particular scenario is like the stories right like you think about johnny depp's career Right. He was one of the most beloved actors for the longest time. And the next thing you know, instantly cut off. Right. Like he instantly got dropped from like all these like major roles and things like that. And then people started wondering why. Right. People knew about his history of drug addiction. People knew about his history in, in acting, like some roles that he's played. And then they started hearing about his relationship. Right. But he wasn't very public about it. Right. And so people started asking why, like, what is that's just like paparazzi stuff. Right. People just start to dig in information. And then like as the, like more and more things started to come to light, this whole story of abuse that started shaping and forming people at first were like, oh, that's not that's not real. Right. But then as history, like if you continue still telling the same story over a consistent period of time, people go, OK, cool. Like like that's really happening. He has not changed his story at all in the last like six months. He hasn't changed his story in the last three years. He has not changed his story at all, right? There's nothing like, 
the whole time, like there's a consistency of the stories and people really resonate with that struggle. They're like, oh my God, I too know what it's like to be in that long of like abuse and those type of things, right? And I think that's what's really coming to the relatable factor and why it's so polarizing, right? It's, it's literally that so many people have gone through different types of abuse that they're all, they're all of a sudden interjecting their own stories into this like, oh my God, like I know what that's like, look at him. Like, they're like, he's like eccentric and like she's like uh she was filming him secretly right like what kind of you can only imagine what that would do for people's psyche and that's just a celebrity and this stuff happens in in everyday life right that's why people look at social media and celebrities is to kind of escape their own reality a little bit and then go holy crap like johnny depp's just like one of us (laughs) right he needs help just like us and that's like the the that's what makes it really relatable. I think that's what it comes down to. That's a key. That's actually a really good point because it's not just, so not just about creating the condom and enemy, but also having the relatability to your audience that you're the same, like that he's human being like, Hey, just because I'm Johnny Depp and I'm famous and I'm a celebrity, right. That authenticism means like, doesn't mean that I don't deal with the same stuff you guys do, right. Kind of taking yourself off the pedestal and yep. putting it at the same level of your audience. Yeah. That's a huge factor as well. I did actually, it's a good point. I didn't think about that. Um, and yeah, so relatability, definitely key because I know a lot of people when it comes to marketing that the, one of the things they screw up is they feel like, uh, we actually talked about this in the mastermind recently where someone brought this up. They feel like that because they have to be viewed as the expert that they have to know everything. But what happens is when you put yourself at such a high level, it's hard to build a connection with your audience when they don't see that, that you're human, that you make mistakes because then they feel like, well, how the hell am I ever going to get to that level where I know everything. Right. But when they see like, wait a second, you know, Funk's not perfect. Wally's not perfect. You know, they, they make mistakes. They're, they're still in the process of learning. Look at where they're at and have they got to this. It's okay for me not to be perfect. Right. And then boom, automatically you build a deeper connection. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Um, so cool. So get your red ocean, dial in your message. Now it comes to dialing in the message. I think, I think one of the key points, what, what, what I've learned over the years is kind of, um, and, you know, Brunson talks about this too. When you kind of get that story dialed in, I think uh, it, it becomes like very, really repetitive. A lot of people don't want to say the same thing over and over again. But I heard this interesting quote from someone that was like, the moment you're getting burnt out of saying the same thing over and over again, maybe it's events, maybe it's videos, you're just telling the same story. And you're like, oh my gosh, I feel like everyone's already knows and heard this. The moment you're kind of feeling like, I'm, I'm, I'm just sick of repeating it. That's the moment where it's just now being received by your audience. I thought that was really fascinating, right? Yeah, I mean, one thing that we all like to play, right, is, uh, you know, cash flow, uh, the game cash flow of Robert Kiyosaki. I yeah, mean, the dude's yeah. literally, what's every fucking video by Kiyosaki? It's the same messaging every single time. And what's funny is like, he'll get me with titles. Well, I'll just be like, oh man, this is fire. And then at the end, I'm like, I didn't learn anything. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, no, I thought I was going to learn this nugget that was in the title. You'd even share it with me. And then he just, he just repeats the same shit over and over and over and over again. Yeah. Kind of like building up that messaging. Right. So how many realistically, how many key stories and messaging? Cause obviously there's messaging within the messaging. You're kind of key things like, right. You know, using Kiyosaki as an example, you know, I'll just lay out what I know, right. It talks about how, um, you know, you've, you've been, you've been lied to, right. Um, you, um, you know, 401ks are bad work. You know, you, you have to have skills. You should focus on like passive incomes, repeats the same things, right. How realistically in y'all's experience, how many of those do you think that you would need before it's just to kind of focus on? So it's not overwhelm, but not overkill. Um, it's a great, great question. Um, for me, <clears throat> I always think of it like, and this is a copywriting technique, but it takes at least three legs to make a stool, right? I like meaning, that. meaning that in order for an argument, like if, if your argument's a metaphorical stool, it mm-hmm. can't have one leg, it can't have two, it needs to have at least three to, to stand straight. And so mm-hmm. I always think of it like that in terms of, of anything, in terms of proof, right? So I think three concepts is good. Three stories is probably is probably like a really good number for you. And those three stories need to be keyed in on like, what are those three major beliefs that people have in the market or like, you know, t- tackling those like limiting beliefs, so to speak. Okay. And then what about, because I know a lot of people listening that I've seen people struggle with is when it comes to kind of doing your messaging and being that, that, that dialed in and polarizing. I think that some people's fear of getting to that level is that they would turn other people away 
which I mean, in my opinion, that's the entire goal, right? You want people who are going to believe these key, these key events. Um, good prime example, your, your sensei, um, Kevin Hutto, um, Fung, you know, had talked about this before when at an event, we was kind of talking about the level of like, quote unquote, Hydra, but, uh, towards the end of that, like he gave a good example that I never thought about of, um, personalization. So like if your opinion, you know, if he gave an example of, um, you know, if you're pro, if you're pro Trump, right. And, and as he's like, at the, at the end of your messaging, he's like, talk about that. And, and the whole purpose is like, he's like, cause if they're like, oh, I, I disagree with that where now you're getting attention. And he's like, cool. You didn't want them in your ecosystem anyways. Cause they didn't even share the same beliefs. Right. Yeah. So, you know, talk about the importance of getting that dialed in not having the fear of talking of, of, of sharing those beliefs. Right. Because this is what happens even with companies, right? You talk about your belief and then it, yes, it backfires even as a CEO and, you know, stocks go down and all this stuff. But at the same time, I feel like your tribe sticks with you, right? Yeah. So y- you can't have it all. So what would you say to those people who are really struggling with like, okay, well, should I really talk about my beliefs and go that all in, you know, the fear of losing people? What would you say to those people? Well, I would say, you know, the fear of losing these people, I mean, you know, they, they just weren't at the right mindset at that time, right? And that's not to say that they are, they won't come back later, right? Mm-hmm. And so how I kind of think about it is, uh, speaking of like Kevin, um, what he created in, in a sense was this framework called the five dominoes. And these stories were five like essential like key points and obstacles in your life that you had to have like, you had to overcome it. And these stories tip each other over and then pretty much tells the tells your life story for you from like where you started to how you got to where right now. And so like one of the key stories that I use um, currently, you know, is that like I used to be a corporate uh, IT guy. Right. But in that corporate IT structure, I was also a part time drug dealer. You know what I mean? Like having that kind of like internal struggle of being in an imposture and like in that world, like having to one like dish out like you know the goods under the table then also go the next day and do a presentation in front of like managers and and executives you know those types of things kind of like shape you a little bit and so you kind of I really live with like the imposter syndrome for for a while but then like that becomes like a key part of my story in my business because that's what it allows me to like relate to people and like work with the certain people that I want to do like who, who share like a similar walk of life right and they're like oh my god this like I would have never thought you would have done that. That makes a lot of sense, you know? So yeah, I, love I think the, uh, I love the, the talk about being a drug dealer with Jesse Pinkman right there in the background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. What, what can you do? <laughs> <laughs> like I got nothing, I got nothing on that one. Right. But like, that's what Kevin talked about was like the five stories, like five dominoes that really that you would tell over and over again. And eventually what happens is that people learn those stories so well, they resonated with so much that they're like, oh my God, yeah. Like he did, uh, Kev, for example, Kevin used to work on Wall Street. Like he used to sell stocks, right? And he used to like pick up the phone, sell people on stocks and shit like that. And then what he said was is that it was just an evil world, right? Like he talked about big corporations and that type of environment. Like they were just in there for the money. and ended up like he ended up trying to do the internet thing he got really good at running like ads and ended up building a marketing agency so he ended up pivoting and that's like how he transitioned in the early 2000s into a marketer and then a few years later right as his agency gets bigger and he's getting on more clients like managing these portfolios he suddenly has the realization like oh my god i built the exact thing that i tried to get away from right and so you see how that those are two stories like that kind of combine each other and tipped it over where his common enemy is like evil corporations, right? Like big, yeah. big, big box businesses, like just running all these people to death practically and only in it for the money. So he ended up giving away all of his shares uh, to the other owners and then stepped away from it and had to figure out what he wanted to do, how to make an income, you know, outside of those t- corporations. And then he ended up creating the system of oil wells, digital oil wells, right? He's like, I'm pretty smart, pretty savvy. You know, I can figure out this internet thing and how to make a, a product work. And that's how he came up with the hustler secret, right? And that's like, those three stories is like, what are key pivotal points in him and how he earned his freedom and like being able to talk the way he does, like have the lifestyle that he wants, right? And so those those stories of like where you were from, 
and how you got to where you are now is so crucial because you never know who's watching you and you never know who's like struggling in those same areas. And if you're, if you're overcoming those people would want to know, and that's how you kind of like build awareness to yourself. Right. And then if you're truly trying to build your business or your brand to a certain level, those are the stories you would want people to know. Cool. So as marketers, how would you guys break that up? Right. You know, obviously would those just be like individual pieces of content? Would that just be like something segmented into separate emails, you know, like videos, or would you just tell the whole five dominoes at once? Would you just piece them up and or, or you just kind of make those the core messaging over and over again? Is that kind of the key theme here? Yeah, you definitely want to split them up into like different series. So like for an email campaign series, you get somebody to opt in your free offer or whatever it is. And then over the next course of like five to seven days, you release an email talking about a specific story and struggle in the business. It's kind of like what Russell Brunson did with ClickFunnels, right? He had the, uh, the thing called um, his Seinfeld sequence, right? Where it just talked like a day in the life of like who you were and then like why you're trying to like build a business. So it's very similar in effect where, but these are like struggle stories because you're trying to build a brand. You're trying to build like a, like raving fans, right? And then fans only become fans of yours if they can relate to certain things. So you definitely want to spread them out. Um, you don't want to hit them all at once, right? People are like, oh my God, this guy can like talk forever because who wants to sit there for three hours and talk? <laughs> I honestly don't even want to call it us versus them anymore. I genuinely want to say, what's your Johnny Depp story and who's your Amber Heard? Like, I just want to, I just want to rename. Yeah, yeah, I'm just yeah, going to yeah. start renaming it out there just because it's just gotten so, so one-sided uh, in terms of branding that it's just so good, just good to use. And then, then other people start saying it, right? They're like, oh man, you got to have your Johnny Depp story. And who, who's your Amber Heard? Wait, what? Amber Heard, who's yeah, the yeah, bad yeah, guy? Yeah, yeah. yeah, who's the bad guy? Yeah, um, yeah. yeah that, that, that's that's true. Kind of having them, having the dominoes, um, labeling the content, you, you guys, that'd be pretty fire for you guys event too. Like, do you guys ever thought about maybe like workshopping that with people as well? Kind of going into like, who's, who's your common enemy? What, 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 what can you guys do for the stories and stuff? I mean, that'd be pretty, that'd be pretty dope. I'd I think it. that'd be a new event. Probably, yeah. probably like, yeah, we have to be a separate event, but we are thinking about doing like some, some more like private workshop things as a break off of the current event, if that makes sense. So yeah. some little mastermind stuff, we're going to, we're going to test some things. It'll be cool. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For those tuning in today's the second. So we got what third, fourth, fifth, yep. Yep. three days, fifth, three days. So if you guys are in the, the Florida St. Pete area, make sure you guys um, check out first Thursday of every single month. These two have a, an awesome event, um, completely free, a lot of fun going to like pitching and, and stuff like that. So um, very, very valuable there. Um, if you're tuning in and you're not in the local area, um, they're going to, they're going to have some stuff online as well, maybe streaming it eventually. So uh, you guys will get some value from that also, but that, that'd be pretty dope. So cool. Um, so we, we, we have the red ocean. We know who we want to make our Amber heard. Yeah. <laughs> we know we got to have the Amber heard. Yeah, throw rocks at them. You got to be polarizing. got to always get the messaging out consistently. Right. Uh, then cool. What's next? What's the, what's, what's the best way to kind of going in and really um, capitalizing off of it? Because like in this case, right, building a tribe, way of capitalizing it, let's be honest, right? If, you know, um, Johnny Depp wins, I, 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 think his, I think he was countersuing for 100 million. Can't remember if she was suing him for 100 or, or, or and then he countersued or she countersued. I don't know. But one of them's getting 50 or 100 million. So yes. him building a tribe is no, don't, no mistake. He's capitalizing. <laughs> Right. So, so what's, what's, what's the next step? Once you get all this down and get your messaging. What are you selling? <laughs> yeah. So just sell, just ask, just go for it. Right. Yeah. Like you can ask them like, well, essentially you can just do uh, what, we, what I like to call live feedback. Right. Like mm -hmm. you just go and talk to your tribe and figure out the things that they may be struggling with. Right. And if they're, or they're trying to, if they're related with you on those stories and things like that, and they want to know how to get out of that, that's an opportunity of coaching, right? That's an opportunity to like run an event, like host a workshop, you know, kind of like, yeah, you kind of figure out what it, what really like works with your audience and stuff like that. Who knows? Maybe you're like you're a DJ and you just want, they just want, they really love your music, right? And it's you releasing an EP, right? You know, you're releasing your first album, you know, maybe you're an artist and you've finally like finished up your art collection and stuff like that. But people have like really heard your story of like, leaving the nine to five world and becoming a, 
an artist full time and making a living out there. And then you created this 10 collection set and people really want that, right? People are, you just offer that to them because people want to support you because you built that tribe. So yeah, figure you would essentially do customer feedback of like, hey, what do you guys want to see? What would you guys like to see of, see more of? It'd be very them? valuable for your sales team as well. Actually, you wouldn't mind testing um, sales reps knowing the the domino stories because that'd be really, I mean, they, they can literally leverage that even in the sales process. So I think that'd be really powerful too because it's knocking over the dominoes and still building relatability with the brand, right? Yep. And the definitely difference between just lead generation and, and branding long-term is very, very important. Um, cool. Do you have, you have anything to add to that as well, Wally? Yeah, I think I think the 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 key for me in terms of like just just thinking about all these stories is is basically in, in like a one sentence version, what you're doing is teaching people how to think, right? Like you're teaching them how to think. Like you know, you overcome this situation in this story, and because of that story, you think a different way now, and that's why they need to think this way. Does that make sense in terms of like the high level of a, yeah. of a, of a story? For sure. So what are the what are the detrimental effects of this, right? Because I know a lot of people too. Um, I see a lot of quote unquote gurus out there who they literally just why they don't really focus on an offer and try to become an expert. They literally just create offers based off of like trends, you know? And so it, it so time goes by and then they're just next thing, you know, they're like into, um, you know, certain type of internet marketing and entrepreneurship and e-com and then crypto. And they're just come just you know, bouncing like from this. thing to thing. Right. It, and it's so fresh, so fucking frustrating. I'm going to call it what it is. So annoying. <laughs> Um, and, and, but I feel like the detrimental effects of that is if you're always bouncing from thing to thing, and then all of a sudden you have to adapt and your story changes, I feel like that would confuse the audience because it's like, well, wait a second, this guy was saying this person, this, 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 and this, and this, right. But now they're saying that that's, that doesn't add up. They've, this goes against everything they've been preaching. And that's where I've noticed that happens, right? The audience is receiving all this message over and over. And then as the business owner, you bounce, you pivot to a completely new industry, and then you're like, oh, I've come to this revelation. Everything I said before was wrong. <laughs> now I believe this, right? And it just adds this confusion. So do you think there's detrimental effects of doing that? 100%. Yeah, I think that there's detrimental effects of doing that. I think that <clears throat> um, people don't stay in their lane long enough, if that makes sense. Uh, like, you know, if, whenever I think about marketing or doing digital marketing or whatever, like, I've, like I'm going to put a decade of time in. You know what I mean? Like, people are going to know me in 10 years and they, they you know 10 years ago they're gonna be like yeah he was marketing back then if that makes sense right yeah. mm -hmm. and so and I, I want i want that thread to always continue and that continues to help me build my brand and 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 you know help my business and those things right especially if it's in the same industry but if i were to keep on switching industries right like it's, it's essentially starting over your credibility every time right so imagine imagine you put five years into one thing and then you're like all right well like i guess i guess i'm gonna go you know pivot over to a new industry now great well, you start back at zero in this new industry, if that makes sense. So it's like, it's like all the momentum you had before, even though you might have some spillover from people you already had, essentially you have to start back from zero. So you go, you do have to keep rebuilding that momentum. And so me, me personally, I don't have enough energy to, to keep rebuilding my momentum yeah. like repeatedly over time, right? Um, does that make sense? Yeah, but I guess the pro of that would be because you've told your story for so long, even if you're pivoting, I mean, let's say every two years, you already have such a large following and audience that even when new people come into your ecosystem, they're still going to be like, well, wait, who's this Wally person? He has all these followers, right? You know, and he's, he's saying this messaging. So even if they're coming in day one and they're receiving this new message and they've never heard of you before, they weren't kind of like sold on the old stuff. They have no idea. And they still see the following and stuff from the tribe you built over time. So I, I, I guess in a way, it's almost kind of like a double-edged sword, right? I feel like it, it, the following side of it would, would still have some benefit, right? Yeah, for sure. It, it does. I mean, we, we saw this with, with JC, you know, he pivoted three times, right? He went from, you know, a basketball coach. So mm -hmm. he did like, had like a six figure business there, sold his business, moved from basketball into dating coaching, mm -hmm. right? But then he had like quite a bit of time as a dating coach and, you know, almost uh, not, not quite 10 years, but a good bit of time. Let's just, let's just say it's up there. And then when he moved from dating, he moved into like business coaching. So, so he's kind of had like some of those transitions himself. Um, but I think that the key element for him, it was that every time he moved that there was still a part of the audience that resonates with the new message that came in, if that makes sense. Right. Like, like when you move from, you know, 
basketball to dating. It's like, well, athletes want to date people, right? It's not like, yeah, yeah, not so like that. Like you get to tie it together. Yeah. And yeah. so it's like, and then when you move from dating to business coaching, it's like, well, like there's plenty of guys that are good at dating now. Right. But how many of those guys still need help with money? A lot, you know, like a lot of those people do. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Cause that's one thing that, uh, so synergistic type stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Grant Cardone leans on that a lot too, because he's getting all this attention now with, uh, having guest speakers like an athletes and rappers. And that's what he says. He's like, cool. What happens when your health goes down? Right. And you know, your, your rapping career is only going to last so long. Right. What are you going to do when it's done? Like you gotta, you know, you have to have investments, you have to like money. You're going to have to, you're going to have to have the skill. So if you're in that field, you better start now. Right which is smart, right? Kind of time, you know, able to take his messaging and kind of go into a new audience. And I'm assuming his goal is in the hopes of getting rappers and athletes now to go and probably invest with them, right? Kind of, kind of merging and segmenting. I, I like that a lot. Uh, okay. So definitely don't be afraid to pivot and adapt, but if you do make sure that you go and you tie everything together. Uh, I like that. What, uh, what else do you have any other gold nuggets for the audience that may be tuning in? What about like, cause I, I know you guys were very strategical with, um, when y'all would create like new offers and going, y'all had like pretty much a hell of a launch, but, uh, before doing that, y'all, do y'all kind of go through like that exercise as a game plan of, okay, cool. This is it. Here's, here's what we're going after. What are the, what are the new dominoes going to be? Um, do, y- do y'all, do y'all kind of really prep that way before just going and attacking? Yeah, that's a good question. So, so I wouldn't say necessarily a new, a new domino, but in terms of like introducing new offers to your audience, uh, it, it, it's always thinking about the synergy, right? So, so here, here's an example. We, we, for a long time, we were selling this product called uh, Money Boss, right? So essentially Money Boss, the messaging behind it was, you know, type messages on your phone, make money, right? So it's like, so it's like meaning that you could use, you know, typing message on your phone, your cell phone, whatever, and you can make money out of it. And that was like the main hook. And we brought people in for that product, right? Now, if people that want to make money, right, through messaging, even if they want to build a business or whatever, they're probably interested in passive income too, right? In, in some form or fashion, right? I mean, of course, if you make money one way, you'd want to make money in an automated way. It, it just, it just kind of correlates, right? Um, so we were like, hmm, what is the best like passive income idea at the time, right? Like what was the best like model that we had seen? And, and that would be a good synergistic like fit for, for the style of business that we had for the audience, right? And so what we did is we, we, we uh, partnered up with uh, another group of people and we basically created uh, an offer called B&B Boss, right? Which was which was a similar business model, but it was how to make money on Airbnb, passive income, right? Like pa- passively. So you build a business model. They teach you how to outsource everything, and then you know you just collect your revenue at the end, essentially, right? Why are we not doing that? What, do you know? Do you have the knowledge of this? Why aren't we doing Airbnb uh, on the side? What's going on? <laughs> That's a great question. I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, I. I won't say yes or no, but I will say that I know some stuff. Uh, right. But, Ooh. but uh, so that, like that, that's an example, right? Is we we found out in the audience that we we had a money making audience, right? So people that were interested in this like idea, and then there was a sub segment of those people that you know they don't want to work in an agency style business. They don't want to do all the messages. They don't want to do all this stuff that you know the manual things that require that, right? Maybe they're just not there, but they have a little money that they can invest. So then they would invest in something passive. And they'll, they're okay taking less income if it's passive. Does that make sense? So as we were going through the sales process, we, we, we identified these people among the people we were already selling to. And we were like, oh, dude, like we could just sell them this other product. And we were able to create like an additional six figures revenue by introducing that offer like per month, if that makes sense. So I think, what's, I think what Wally just said is very key for those listening, right? He said an additional six figures revenue. Um, cause I know a lot of people hear that they're kind of going to be like, okay, well, if I have this audience who's I'm selling this one thing, and I know there's some people who would like this, they would want to get distracted and start like creating a new product. And this kind of goes back to, you know, previous episode where we talked about the uh, hundred million dollar beliefs of Alex Shamozi. And one of the things Shamozi talks about is, you know, one, one audience, one offer to get you your first, and then one channel of, of, of traffic, right? One, one, and one to get your first seven figures, right? Before adding something additional and going after anything else. So I think that's very key to, to throw out there. So for those hearing it, just thinking, oh, okay, well, I'm gonna take all his advice. And I know that these people may want this and this people may want that. And next thing you know, they're, they're fucking juggling three, <laughs> three offers at one time and they're gonna be spread too thin. Then I'm yeah. assuming before you guys did that, he was already having a lot of success with that first audience and product, right? Hundred percent. I mean, yeah, we we were doing yeah m- multiple six figures in on two different teams like yeah. 
yeah, uh, like doing well with that already. And so we already had enough data from the audience to know that there were that these people existed, if that makes sense. You know, they were already we were basically already sold or tried to sell them the first offer and they didn't buy. Right. But then we would we would offer them the next one and then they would buy. So so what we found is that is that in, our, in, in terms of like like how to do that in, in execution purposes was that you offer the first thing first. So you never interrupt the current sales process that exists. Right. And then and then after you have that whole sales cycle. So for us in this particular time, it was like nine days, right? So we pretty much knew that within within nine days, if they were gonna, they would have bought immediately, or it's gonna be a longer sales cycle, if that makes sense, mm -hmm. right? So so we knew that at the nine day point, if they hadn't purchased yet, if we offered them this other thing, they might have bought that like right off the spat, right? So we just started creating like lists of these people who were outside of the sales cycle, and we just you know it it, it worked out very nicely, um, and we were able to build a whole nother team just on this second offer, you know? So at that point, because you already had your sales cycle from your messaging, right? So you have your, your what's the quote is, you have your common enemy, right? And, and I like that first, because you said kind of more broad audience, right? People wanted to make money first, and then there's going to be a subset of those people who want passive, right? So you use the first messaging to attract a, a, a sales process, right? And then from that attraction, then you made the offer to that already first process sales process to see what would happen. Right. And then in doing so you got data and realized, okay, there are a subset of people who would, who would want this. Right. So once somebody listening in gets that data, they're at this step. Okay. We got our messaging's working. We have our five, five dominoes. We're having people move forward and we know that there's a subset of people. We want to, we want to test out this new thing right now. Now, once I get the data of that subset, how do I tie in the messaging to attract that subset into everything else, right? Would you say that messaging now has to be like a, a second like, like channel? Would it be like, okay, cool, we're going to go and create, uh, we're going to attack this subset and we're going to create a whole new like messaging just to attract these individuals, right? Or would you just keep all the same messaging on the front and then just add the other messaging to them on the back end to try to get them out of the current process? I hope that makes sense. Yeah, uh, it makes perfect sense. And mm -hmm. so, uh, what what you said, right? I would, we we tried driving leads specifically for 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 that offer, and it did work. I mean, it definitely does. Mm -hmm. But uh, in terms of the marketing side, it needs to look and feel very similar to the current messaging, if that makes sense. For it not to like be weird. Um, yeah. What we found is if it was too different, then it, it was it was too much of an abrupt thing, and people started getting confused. Like, what is this? What are you doing? Uh, we, we've tried all kinds of offers. We tried like a Turo offer and, and, and different like passive income things. Um, and What's and Turo, Turo. So like Turo is like a is like a a it's kind of like Uber, but like it's a car rental service that you can so you can basically ah. like like rent rent cars from people. Okay. Um, so it's like not through a car rental service, but it's like a third party platform where then people off, like can upload their their car on there and you can rent it from them individually, right? Um, does that make sense? Yeah. So, so we, we even try to offer with that, right? And, and so, but what we found was that, that when we started introducing like different kinds of content to promote that second offer, if it, wasn't, if it wasn't in line with the original in terms of the messaging, at least a little bit, then, then it, it, it kind of felt weird. So what you're saying is through your testing, it's better keep your original messaging, like your brain, your main story, let them come in and then just let them, whoever wants to go to that next level of like, cool, you made it here. You know how to create income. Now, you, do you want to make it passive compared to let's just create a whole new messaging and be like, you must have passive income and going after the audience and making them come okay. that way. It's better to just, it's better to just keep your messaging in and just tweak the story in the back end. So those people are already going through the change. So now you have your front end. I know how to make money. Cool. Do you, do you want to turn it passive? That way you have, it, it's easier rollover to go on to the next step. So there's no confusion. Exactly. And then that, that really comes in on the back end too. Like, it's really important to, to, to kind of start, like, obviously all the cross sales and everything you can happen should happen on the back end, right? Yeah. On the front end, you don't, you want to like drop that confusion level as low as possible. So like being consistent on the messaging is, is great. Like that's how Robert Kiyosaki can sell like 20 different kinds of real estate offers, right? Right. Because like, okay, here's all the stuff you need to know. And it's the same every time. But then on the back end, he's on email and he's like, oh, well, you should probably mm -hmm. learn about 
you know, real estate, you know, REIs or like, you know, whatever. I'm not sure of all of Kiyosaki's offers, but you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, he says, you know, you must, you must have skills and you need cash flow, and then he'll do joint ventures with people on the back end, right. Saying, Hey, th- hear their story about how they're making passive income and do a joint venture, right. Rather than just, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So keep the messaging the same, get them into your ecosystem. Once you get them ecosystem and you're, you're building your tribe, you got them. And then what, based on the stages that they're at on the back end, then cool, you can make, you can make the different offerings. So you kind of have your, your warm market for the upsells and then your cold market just stays the same. Yep. Like that. It keeps it simple. And then also like less stressful, not like overwhelm of, you know, confusing and, and, and paralyzing people. Uh, so that that's huge. Yeah, hundred percent. And I think that's the key thing is that, is that you want to, you want it to be very easy for people to make the next step. Right. And so it's like, it's like the more, the more things you add into the marketing side on what they see in the front end, the, the, the more conflicting beliefs and views you're going to have on your customer, like inside when they get to you, if that makes sense. Well, it's like, oh, we were talking about passive income the other day. Like, why, like, why are you doing that? Like, didn't you just say how you need to make all like high income skills and all this stuff? Like, it's very, like, you just don't want to like pollute your, your messaging so to speak. For sure. And I think a key factor too, for those that be, be valuable is more on the subject of hero story. Um, when you're telling that, I, th- I think you have to actually, you have to go through the trials and errors of like, you know, let's take Johnny Depp, right. The, you know, drug addiction and, you know, all these things, but he still had his success. Right. And, you know, went to rehab, got over it. It's in, you know, it's in pirates came, came back up the same thing with, um, What's name? Robert Downey Jr., another yeah. prime case and example, right? Now, a huge fan of Robert Downey yeah. Jr. And everyone that loves him knows the struggles that he dealt with. And then, boom, you know, everyone knew him as Iron Man. So, how important is it when you're talking about your your struggles of your hero story to actually pivoting to becoming the hero of the story before carrying on with the rest of the messaging? Huge, huge. You like? I think I think that you you sh- like the fact that you are the one that made the journey through and they can like see the evidence of you. And especially if they resonate with you as a person like that, like they, it, it makes it more believable for them. Right. It, it's so interesting. What I find is that, is that like 20 different people can deliver the same message, but different people are going to resonate with the message every single time. Right. And mm-hmm. it's more about that individual and how they deliver it and the stories and that thing. And, and that's, what's really going to get people to, to resonate with you. I like yep. that. Boom. That's, uh, that's huge. Cool. Awesome. Any final thoughts, Fung? No, I mean, honestly, I don't really have much to piggyback on on those, right? Like, I think Wally's pretty uh, hit it nail on the head, right? Like, you it just goes to like, how many, how, how often, if you have a, a message or a relatable story, how many times can you say it, right? Now, you can, you can you have the same message, same offer, but just say it differently. <laughs> like, yeah. you know. Yeah, it's okay. I mean, yeah, I don't see any problem with like testing out different ways of getting the put the point across and seeing what happens, right? You yeah. know, telling a different version, maybe a different viewpoint, um, yep. from like others. That that that's, that's nice. cool. Yeah. I like uh, I like kind of the gold nugget that I've seen is is people do want to. Everyone has um, a selfishness in them, so people like becoming the hero of their own story, but people like knowing more what other people are thinking about them in a selfish way for that story. Right. So kind of like, you know, like what you talk about, like the hustler secret, kind of like golf swing, right. You know, it's not just about like, yeah, like, yeah, that's cool. If you hit the ball and it goes soaring, but it's more powerful when people are like, holy shit, how did you do that? Right. That's what people honestly like one, when they come to heroes is knowing that other people are like, talking about them and you know kind of like the keeping up with the joneses even yeah. though he talks you know throws rocks at that but let's be fucking honest everyone wants to they want the validation from from others right 100 percent. Uh, what i equated to you and that i actually i think i talked about this in one of my networking groups um is that everyone wants to be the hero everyone's the hero of their story but when when someone comes to you for advice or looking for something on how you overcame that you've now become the guide no longer the hero you they they they're the hero of their story <laughs> right they're trying to become a hero you they've now came in contact with you you've now become the guide to them to help them on their hero's journey and that in turn helps you and your own hero story going oh my god i just guided somebody to to victory how great is that <laughs> So how important is it to make that pivot though? Because like, I know a lot of people, they talk about like them, 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 which is cool. Like you're, you know, you're the hero of your story when they come in, but 
isn't it, how important is it to play the guide at that point? Like they come in the ecosystem, they come to you. Now you should, you should make everything about them and be the guide and guide them and make your messaging cater to more, more about how they are going to become their own hero now and make that the focus compared to like just me, 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 because you already got them. Right. So That's like, it. do you think that your messaging and your, your, your shift should be more of being the guide? Like you're the owl in Zelda, if you will. Yeah. And then you're just, well, you're just essentially asking them their goals then, right? Because you know what your goals are. You know where you're trying to go, but not everyone's goals are the same, mm -hmm. right? Like, I, I think, you know, when people come into, um, and it kind of goes into like, what well, we've, we've chatted about it before, like what kind of like income level are you trying to reach, right? What kind of brand recognition are you trying to reach, right? Like, are you just trying to be like, you know, the next mom blogger that makes like, you know, an extra three, 4K a month? Or are you just trying to be the next Robbie Kiyosaki or Grant Cardone, Alex Shimozzi, Right. And really conduct those impacts. Or are you trying to be such uh, an impact in your local community? Right. Like there's, there are different levels of like asking what you want to do. Are you trying to put impact on the city? You know, I, we have a people, few people in our networking group that's looking to grow like um, communities that does like community gardens on rooftops down in downtown St. Pete. Right. And it's just like, OK, cool. Like how you, you can be a local hero and you don't have to like start this in every other city, right? You can start with your own local community and people will just want to know how to, how that thought process works on how to get people on board, how to build a community, how, how do they, do they need a website? Do they need social media? What's the kind of branding message that they got? That's why they come to you and you're like, okay, yeah, like I can help you with that as long as I understand where your goals are. Got it. Awesome. Well, that's, Killer way to be able to end the show today. For those that are tuning in, just to recap, very, very important. Go ahead and decide what your Johnny Depp story is going to be, right? Really focus on your hero story, your struggles, you know, how you got over the struggles. And while you're breaking out what those struggles are, every little barrier that you have, as Fung said, break them into your five dominoes, right? Decide what your five dominoes are going to be. Just little stories that all tie together so that once, once story number one is, oh, okay, I get it. That belief, boom, ties into story number two, knocking over as many beliefs as you can, right? And then decide who, what is your red ocean? What is everybody else out there in the marketplace saying that's the same thing, like as Wally said, so that you can decide what your blue ocean is going to be, right? Throw rocks at the bad guy, figure out your Amber Heard right? Tack it. <laughs> you are, you are the hero. You're the Johnny Depp of your story. Figure out who your Amber Heard is throw rocks at them. Right. To the point where people are signing petitions or like, screw that person. I don't want them. I don't want them to win. You don't want, you don't want the enemy to win ever. Right. So that thus you're starting to build your tribe, having consistency. Then when it's time to actually go and make your offer, right. Focus on the one offer going through. And then when it's ready, when you're having consistency and growth in your business, and you know that there's a subset of people to Wally's point, don't take the struggles of trying to reinvent the wheel, right? Wally, he's tested it. <laughs> he knows, like, just listen, have him come in, then add the story onto the back end so that people in the back end can now go to the new subset, which is another huge knowledge boner moment for those that are, are doing marketing or have their own business. Maybe you're already at that level, right? Do not try to go after different audiences at one time, starting from scratch, right? That is going to spread yourself super thin. You're not going to get anywhere and you're not going to have progress, right? Go get progress first. Then you can add value to your marketplace. And here's the cool thing. Your story stays the same. You don't have to stress over what the hell else do I talk about? You get to be like Robert Kiyosaki and Grant Cardone, who literally says the same fucking shit over and over again, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years. Maybe you can sprinkle a little bit of, of um, uh, you know, uh, one, one thing that Robert Kiyosaki did that I really like is, is his stuff still say the same, right? We talked about like the importance of gold, right? It's like, oh, gold. And he's like, Bitcoin's the new gold, right? Like he, he tied it in and twisted it up with current events talking about like, yeah, now I'm in, now I'm investing in Bitcoin because the value of the dollar is crap. Right. So Kiyosaki went from value of the dollar sucks. This is why I put money into gold. And then here comes crypto. And now he's like, oh guys, Bitcoin's a new gold, right? It's going to hold the value of the dollar. Right. So, so same, same core messaging, same core messaging over time. Right. No, no, nothing, nothing crazy different. It, it all still aligns with it, which I, I really love. So I uh, hope this was valuable for everybody here. I hope there's a lot of knowledge bomb, bomb moments. Um, definitely take the hero story to heart. Focus on your common enemy and you guys are going to win in branding to where if you ever in a defamation trial, you'll have raving fans who will <laughs> go on the back end and make tip jars and make sure that you win.
right? Yeah. That's something to strive for, if anything. <laughs> you don't, you don't want to lose a lawsuit. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. We will catch you guys on the next episode of the Knowledge Boner Experience. See you guys.